In this video, I am going to explain about the properties of halocanes and halorines and so you know halocanes are polar in nature. So first I am going to explain about the halocanes. So first we will say about the melting and boiling points. Actually melting and boiling points you know they depend on the force of attraction existing between the molecules basically force of attraction so depends on forces of attraction between molecules this is one point and it also depends on the Size and branching, size and branching in chain. If there is branching, if there is longer size, so longer molecules they have more melting boiling points. Why? Because if the size is longer, so force of attraction, when there are force, area in contact is more. So longer isomers or a straight chain a straight chain isomers are having more melting and boiling points this is very important point to know straight chain with respect to With respect to branch chains. Why? See if here it is there, if it is here, four atoms are in chain. And if I draw here, so like this, so there is you know a small gap in between this. But when we take the same branch isomer, see here, three carbon. So at level, the distance between the molecule will increase. So here, see, there is large gap. So this is one point about the size and the branch. Now other point in case of different halocanes, different halocanes, how like if you take here RCL, here we take RBR, here we take RI. So you know it follows this trend because if R is same, R is same here, R is of same size, then this trend is there. Iodides are, you know, they have larger size, and so iodides have more melting boiling point because size of iodide is very large, and so uh, this is there about the melting and boiling points. Now coming to solubility, so you know. Halolcanes are polar in nature. So halolcanes are generally water soluble, but the solubility decreases with the increase in size of the molecule due to you know increase in buoyancy effect. So generally they are water soluble, water soluble, but the solubility, solubility decreases, there is decrease in solubility, decreases with increase in size of the chain due to Increase in buoyancy effect. If 
other side is more, so it will float. It will float over the surface, and so solubility is not possible. So uh, this is about the physical features of the haloalkanes in general. Exceptions can be there, you know, uh, like fluorides. Fluorides are, you know, gases, and so. Uh, this is uh, about the physical features. Now coming to haloarenes. So you know haloarenes, they are aromatic in nature, and so uh, in haloarenes, basically the monosubstituted, monosubstituted like this, monosubstituted of any type, whether fluoro or bromo or iodo. They have almost similar melting boiling points. Mono substituted, mono substituted compounds have almost similar, almost similar melting point and boiling point because this dominates. The benzene ring dominates over this, and so uh, this X is not going to be there for any other reason. But in case of this is very important point. In case of di substituted arenes, di substituted arenes, di substituted halogens. The melting point and boiling point is much more in case of para isomers. In case of para isomers, with respect to ortho and May. This is very important part to note. But why is so? See here, I am going. This is just I am taking the general case. Here, this is you know or hope. Here, I am going. This you know meta. Here. Third, I am going the pair. Now, in case of ortho and meta forms, this halogen here and this halogen here, they act as side chain. They act as side chain, and so you know they are unable to have the perfect symmetry. So, in this here. The side chain, side chain nature of X prevents prevents from closer attachment, closer attachment, or you can say the molecules they don't have the symmetry. Molecules don't have the symmetry, or molecules cannot find themselves to fit. So, in case of ortho and meta, ortho and meta, meta, they have comparatively low melting point and low boiling point. But coming to this para isomer, see the molecules are symmetrical here, symmetrical. Symmetrical molecule. So when the molecules are symmetrical, they can fit into lattice. It just it is like a straight molecule. So in case of para isomers, the molecules are symmetrical, and as a result, they can fit into lattice of each other easily. So when they fit easily, 
So naturally the force of attraction will be much more in case of terraform and so terra isomers they have more melting and boiling points, more melting points and more boiling points. So this is there about the hello elements. Then coming to solubility room. So everybody uh, they are insoluble insoluble in water and soluble in or soluble in organic solvents due to you know nature they are you know non pool and so this is about that now i am going to explain about the chemical properties so we will see first about the halogens and so you know halogens are polar in nature so due to polar nature they under go nucleophilic they undergo nucleophilic substitution reactions easily and there is the attack of nucleophile there is the attack of nucleophile what are nucleophiles? nucleophiles means the species which attacks on the nucleus that is positively charged carbon center it means nucleophiles are negatively charged species so here if I draw here like this and let the take the case here x here there is the h, h and let there be any nucleophile like this is alcoholic group we can take here it can be silent group can be taken and so you know this halide ion which will affect the electron pair towards itself and thereby this carbon will have delta positive charge and this will have delta negative charge and so as a result it will attack here it will attack here this is very simple mechanism this is polar in nature the bond is polarized and this is nucleophile and so there is the very easy attack of the nucleophile we may represent nucleophile as NU or as so they are electron rich they are electron rich species so that is it it will attack here and this will have and it will be there and plus halide ion will go out so this is out gone ion and this is the product so different reactions different substances like we can react with alcohol we can have the with ag cn we can react with kcn then nitrite so there are variety of nucleophiles here if you take this then there will be you know in place of this koh we can have NaOH and so variety of products can be formed and this will form the RNC it will form RCN because you know silver cyanide it appears to be ionic but it is having the covalent character so bonding will take place through the nitrogen and so this is it. similarly RNO2 similarly ROH and so uh, this is about the uh, explanation now we will see the mechanism how it takes place now I am going to explain the mechanism of 
nucleophilic substitution reaction. So, mechanism is of two types and it is SN2 and it is SN1. SN2 it is called as bimolecular nucleophilic substitution reaction. Bimolecular bi means two. So, two molecules they react together but actually you know the processes they take place together. So here it is nucleophile. Here it is nucleophile and this is the halide. This is the haloalkene having halide group. So this is having carbon having delta positive this will have delta negative charge so the molecule is polarized so this is the attacking species which is attacking species so it will attack here on this place from this side this is very important to note that all the chemical reactions they have their own mechanism and they proceed in a particular manner so as a result of this attack here this OH will be attached to this carbon here there is the carbon. So this is dotted line indicates this is dotted line indicates the temporary bonds. Temporary bonds. And this group is called incoming. This group which is called as incoming incoming group. And this you know this is said to be the outgoing outgoing group and this is you know this in the square packet it is intermediate it is intermediate compound or uh, the compound of transition stage transition stage this is neither the retent nor the product the incoming group is coming progressively and the bond becomes stronger stronger and so here this bond is slightly weaker Similarly, so this is you know going to be slightly more and more weaker with respect to time and this will become stronger. So as this will become stronger, this will become weaker. And so at last there is the formation of the product. And so see children, the inversion, this is called as inversion of configuration. The, the structure here see this is one line notation. This is bone line notation. Here, this plane straight line indicates on the axis. This indicates dotted line indicates the away from away from the observer, and this wedge indicates the towards the observer. So, as a result of this, the same thing is reversed here, and so this is the product, and this is the halide ion. And so it is having the inversion, inversion of configuration. We use inversion means just reverse. We have inverted in our homes. What happens when main supply goes away or main supply fails? We are connected with the inverters in our homes and automatically inverter switches it on. And so we are able to get the electricity. But as soon as main supply is on, what happens? Inverter starts, you know, charging and it stops. So this is inverter. Similarly, you can compare the umbrella. Well, you know, there is very high speed wheel. Umbrella, you know, it gets reverse inverted. So same is the case. Inversion of configuration is very important point in the this mechanism of hello alkenes. Now next point related to it is relative reactivity of different halokines. We have the primary halokines, we have secondary reactors. Now see, I am drawing here, here carbon X, H, H, H. This is primary. Now coming to secondary. In case of secondary, here we have X, here we have C, here we have C, here we have H, this is secondary. Now here I am drawing this R, here we have R, here we have R, here. 
here we may put here or for you know, any clarity. Now see, you know about the aesthetic hindrance. And so here, these groups, alkyl groups, they are very bulky. And so they have the electron density around themselves. These groups are bulky groups, bulky groups, and so they have steric hindrance. They have steric hindrance. They have effect of steric hindrance means they create electron density, and so steric hindrance there is repulsion. There is repulsion among themselves. And you know, alkyl groups, they have the tendency, and as a result, they are less polar. They are less polar. Similarly, here there are the three bulky groups. In case of the three, three groups, three groups are present. And so it will be most reactive. So you have to keep in mind that primary halogens are most reactive. Primary halogens are most reactive, followed by secondary, followed by tertiary. Why tertiary are least reactive? Tertiary are least reactive. Least. It is most. Because in case of tertiary, there is the maximum steric hindrance due to three bulky groups, three groups which are bulky and as a result tertiary alcohols are, tertiary halogens are least reactive. Now I am going to explain another very important point and it is unimolecular nucleophilic substitution reaction and it is called as SN1. So, so far you have seen the SN2 bimolecular so in case of bimolecular reactions, the chemical change takes place, the two steps takes place together. But here in this, it takes place in the two different steps. So first, here first step, here there is the tertiary haloalkane and this takes place in protic solvent, protic solvent like alcohol or dilute acid. So it undergoes, you know, have different mechanisms that the formation of carbonium ion or carbocation. So it, you know, it is lost and this is the lost halide ion. So this takes place under protic solvent. This you have to keep in mind. Protic solvent means the solvents which provide the Proton. So automatically there is the ionization and there is formation of this is tertiary, tertiary carbonium ion and this is you know reversible, this is reversible, this is reversible and slow, this is reversible and slow, reversible and slow. This second step, it is irreversible and it is fast. So here there is the nucleophile. So nucleophile, why and again same as it was in case of SN2 mechanism. So again it is same polarization is there. This is the carbonium ion, tertiary carbonium ion, tertiary carbocation. So it is able to attack on this in second step. And as a result, there is formation of the product. So this is there about the SN2 and SN1 mechanism. In SN1, the two steps are there. This is the tertiary halogen and in protic solvent like alcohol or dilute acid or water, it undergoes self ionization to form the carbonium ion or carbocation and this is first step and it is reversible and it is slow and the carbon carries the positive charge so it is 
tersri tagune man and kaho petai and so bromide ion is lost or halide is lost in second step the nucleophile attacks over the this carbon having positive charge and this second step is irreversible and is passed and so there is a mesonal product now coming to last of comparison so see it is just opposite it is just opposite with respect to this sn 2 metals here it is sn 1 metals why it is so because children in case of tertiary carbonium ions tertiary carbonium ions it is they are more stable because of presence of three you know alkyl groups three alkyl groups and uh, alkyl groups they provide the stability the provide stability because the alkyl groups they are electron enriching they are electron enriching groups so they push the electrons and the positive the maintain the positive charge is decreased slightly so as a result when the phosphate is more in the solution so tertiary they react very fast and so this is there in case of secondary there are two alkyl groups and so in case of primary so this is the chain and so it is just opposite that of sn2 and so uh, this is all about the basic introduction about the chemical properties of the halogen and halo rings